constellation. In modern astronomy, a constellation is an internationally defined area of the celestial sphere. These areas are grouped around asterisms, which are patterns formed by prominent stars with an apparent proximity to one another on Earth's night sky. When astronomers say an object is in a given constellation, they mean it is within the boundaries of one of these defined areas of sky. There are also numerous historical constellations not recognized by the IAU or constellations recognized in regional traditions of astronomy or astrology, such as Chinese, Hindu and Australian Aboriginal. Terminology The late Latin term constellatio can be translated as set with stars. The term was first used in astrology, of asterisms that supposedly exerted influence, attested in Amanus, 4th century. In English the term was used from the 14th century, also in astrology, of conjunctions of planets. The modern astronomical sense of area of the celestial sphere around a specific asterism dates to the mid-16th century. Colloquial usage does not distinguish the senses of asterism and area surrounding an asterism. The modern system of constellations used in astronomy focuses primarily on constellations as grid-like segments of the celestial sphere rather than as patterns, while the term for a star pattern is asterism. For example, the asterism known as the Big Dipper corresponds to the seven brightest stars of the larger IAU constellation of Ursa Major. The term circumpolar constellation is used for any constellation that, from a particular latitude on Earth, never sets below the horizon. From the North Pole, all constellations north of the celestial equator are circumpolar constellations. In the northern latitudes, the informal term equatorial constellation has sometimes been used for constellations that lie to the south of the circumpolar constellations. Depending on the definition, equatorial constellations can include those that lie entirely between declinations 45 deg north and 45 deg south, or those that pass overhead between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. They generally include all constellations that intersect the celestial equator. History the current list of 88 constellations recognized by the International Astronomical Union since 1922 is based on the 48 listed by Ptolemy in his Almagest in the 2nd century. Ptolemy's catalog is informed by Eudoxus of Cnidus, a Greek astronomer of the 4th century BC who introduced earlier Babylonian astronomy to the Hellenistic culture. Of the 48 constellations listed by Ptolemy, 30 can be shown to have a much longer history, reaching back into at least the Late Bronze Age. This concerns the zodiacal constellations in particular. Ancient Near East The oldest catalogues of stars and constellations are from Old Babylonian astronomy, beginning in the Middle Bronze Age. The numerous Sumerian names in these catalogues suggest that they build on older, but otherwise unattested, Sumerian traditions of the Early Bronze Age. The classical zodiac is a product of a revision of the old Babylonian system in later Neo-Babylonian astronomy 6th century BC. Knowledge of the Neo-Babylonian zodiac is also reflected in the Hebrew Bible. E. W. Bullinger interpreted the creatures appearing in the books of Ezekiel, and thence in Revelation, as the middle signs of the four quarters of the zodiac, with the lion as Leo, the bull as Taurus, the man representing Aquarius and the eagle standing in for Scorpio. The Biblical Book of Job also makes reference to a number of constellations, including Yshi Ishbir, Xyl Kiel Fool, and Kymh Kiamahip, Job 99, 38 31 32, rendered as Arcturus, Orion and Pleiades by the KJV, but Iish the Beer actually corresponding to Ursa Major. The term Maseroth Maserovert, a hapax legomenon in Job 38 32 may be the Hebrew word for the zodiacal constellations. The Greeks adopted the Babylonian system in the 4th century BC. A total of 20 Ptolemaic constellations are directly continued from the ancient Near East. Another 10 have the same stars but different names. Ancient Egyptian star charts and astronomical ceilings In ancient Egypt, the observation of stars such as Sirius in the day and night sky were used from a very ancient period, in order to predict the Nile flood. 
This practical observation of the stars was also associated with a very complex cosmology that involved various gods and spirits, some of whom were associated with stars and heavenly bodies, such as Sophus Subdit, who was likely associated with Sirius and Tsar who was associated with Orion. This cosmology and practice of astronomy eventually led to the Egyptians producing decanal clocks on coffin lids and star charts featuring their gods and star observations on the ceilings of tombs and temples. Over time these became more complex, featuring various human and anthropomorphic figures representing the planets, stars and various constellations. This tradition was later combined with Greek and Babylonian astronomical systems under the Ptolemies culminating in the zodiac of Dendera. The first circular zodiac showing all the constellations we are familiar with, along with Egyptian constellations, decans and planets. Hindu or Indian constellation Nakshatra, Devanagari, Naksatra, is the term for lunar mansion in Hindu astrology. A nakshatra is one of 27, sometimes also 28, sectors along the ecliptic. Their names are related to the most prominent asterisms in the respective sectors. The starting point for the nakshatras is the point on the ecliptic directly opposite to the star spike called Chitra in Sanskrit, other slightly different definitions exist. It is called Mashadi or the start of Aries. The ecliptic is divided into each of the nakshatras eastward starting from this point. The number of nakshatras reflects the number of days in a sidereal month, modern value, 27.32 days, the width of a nakshatra traversed by the moon in about one day. Each nakshatra is further subdivided into four quarters, or padas. These play a role in popular Hindu astrology, where each pada is associated with a syllable conventionally chosen as the first syllable of the given name of a child born when the moon was in the corresponding pada. The nakshatras of traditional Pitiya astronomy are based on a list of 28 asterisms found in the Atharvaveda, AVS 19.7 and also in the Shatapatha Brahmana. The first astronomical text that lists them is the Vedanga Jyotisha. In classical Hindu mythology, Mahabharata, Harivamsa, the creation of the nakshatras is attributed to Dakshaw. They are personified as daughters of the deity and as mythological wives of Chandra, the moon god, or alternatively the daughters of Kashyapa, the brother of Dakshaw. Each of the nakshatras is governed as lord by one of the nine Grihya in the following sequence, Ktu, South Lunar Node, Shikra, Venus, Ravi or Surya, Sun, Chandra, Moon, Mangla, Mars, Rahu. North Lunar Node, Guru or Brahaspati, Jupiter, Shani, Saturn, and Buddha, Mercury. This cycle repeats itself three times to cover all 27 nakshatras. The lord of each nakshatra determines the planetary period known as the Dasha, which is considered of major importance in forecasting the life path of the individual in Hindu astrology. In Vedic Sanskrit, the term nakshatra may refer to any heavenly body, or to the stars collectively. The classical sense of lunar mansion is first found in the Atharvaveda, and becomes the primary meaning of the term in classical Sanskrit. Greece Roman There is only limited information on indigenous Greek constellations. Some evidence is found in Hesiod. Greek astronomy essentially adopted the older Babylonian system in the Hellenistic era first introduced to Greece by Eudoxus of Cnidus in the 4th century BC. The original work of Eudoxus is lost, but it survives as a versification by Aratus, dating to the 3rd century BC. The most complete existing works dealing with the mythical origins of the constellations are by the Hellenistic writer termed Pseudo-Eratosthenes and an early Roman writer styled pseudo hyginus the basis of Western astronomy as taught during late antiquity and until the early modern period is the Almagest by Ptolemy, written in the 2nd century. Classical Chinese Constellations In classical Chinese astronomy, the northern sky is divided geometrically, into five enclosures, and 28 mansions along the ecliptic, grouped into four symbols of seven asterisms each. The 28 lunar mansions are one of the most important and also the most ancient structures in the Chinese sky, attested from the 5th century BC. 
parallels to the earliest Babylonian, Sumerian, star catalogues suggest that the ancient Chinese system did not arise independently from that of the ancient Near West and East. Classical Chinese astronomy is recorded in the Han period and appears in the form of three schools, which are attributed to astronomers of the Tsanguo period. The constellations of the three schools were conflated into a single system by Chen Tuo, an astronomer of the 3rd century, Three Kingdoms period. Chen Tuo's work has been lost, but information on his system of constellations survives in Tang period records, notably by Kitan Zida. The oldest extant Chinese star chart dates to the Tang period and was preserved as part of the Dunhuang manuscripts. Native Chinese astronomy flourished during the Song dynasty, and during the Yuan dynasty became increasingly influenced by medieval Islamic astronomy. Early Modern Era The constellations around the South Pole were not observable from north of the equator, by Babylonians, Greeks, Chinese or Arabs. The modern constellations in this region were defined during the Age of Exploration, notably by Dutch navigators Peter Dirk Zoon Kieser and Frederick de Houtman at the end of 16th century. They were depicted by Johann Baer in his star atlas Uranometria of 1603. Several more were created by Nicolas Louis de la Cale in his star catalogue, published in 1756. Some modern proposals for new constellations were not successful. An example is quadrants, eponymous of the quadrated meteors, now divided between Boots and Draco. The classical constellation of Argo Navis was broken up into several different constellations, for the convenience of stellar cartographers. By the end of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Guangyi introduced 23 asterisms of the southern sky based on the knowledge of western star charts. These asterisms have since been incorporated into the traditional Chinese star maps. IU Constellations In 1922, Henry Norris Russell aided the IAU, International Astronomical Union, in dividing the celestial sphere into 88 official constellations. Where possible, these modern constellations usually share the names of their Gecko Roman predecessors, such as Orion, Leo or Scorpius. The aim of this system is area mapping, that is the division of the celestial sphere into contiguous fields. Out of the 88 modern constellations, 36 lie predominantly in the northern sky, and the other 52 predominantly in the southern. In 1930, the boundaries between the 88 constellations were devised by Eugene de Porti along vertical and horizontal lines of right ascension and declination. However, the data he used originated back to Epoch B 1875.0, which was when Benjamin A. Gould first made the proposal to designate boundaries for the celestial sphere, a suggestion upon which de la Porte would base his work. The consequence of this early date is that due to the precession of the equinoxes, the borders on a modern star map, such as Epoch J2000, are already somewhat skewed and no longer perfectly vertical or horizontal. This effect will increase over the years and centuries to come. Asterisms The stars of the main asterism within a constellation are usually given Greek letters in their order of brightness, the so-called Bayer designation introduced by Johann Bayer in 1603. A total of 1,564 stars are so identified, out of approximately 10,000 stars visible to the naked eye. The brightest stars, usually the stars that make up the constellation's eponymous asterism, also retain proper names, often from Arabic. For example, the Little Dipper asterism of the constellation Ursa Minor has ten stars with Bayer designation, Ayumi to Piyumi. Of these ten stars, seven have a proper name, viz. Polaris, Ayumi, Kokab, Biyumi, Fakad, Giyumi, Yildun, Diyumi, Eurodilus, Iyumi, Akhfa al farkadain Zadyumi, and Anwar al farkadain Iyumi. The stars within an asterism rarely have any substantial astrophysical relationship to each other, and their apparent proximity when viewed from Earth disguises the fact that they are far apart, some being much farther from Earth than others. However, there are some exceptions, many of the stars in the constellation of Ursa Major, including most of the Big Dipper, are genuinely close to one another, 
travel through the galaxy with similar velocities, and are likely to have formed together as part of a cluster that is slowly dispersing. These stars form the Ursa Major moving group. Dark Cloud Constellations The Great Rift, a series of dark patches in the Milky Way, is more visible and striking in the Southern Hemisphere than in the Northern. It vividly stands out when conditions are otherwise so dark that the Milky Way's central region casts shadows on the ground. Some cultures have discerned shapes in these patches and have given names to these dark cloud constellations. Members of the Inca civilization identified various dark areas or dark nebulae in the Milky Way as animals, and associated their appearance with the seasonal rains. Australian Aboriginal astronomy also describes dark cloud constellations, the most famous being the emu in the sky, whose head is formed by the Kowalsa. 